This is Joy News. Today, hello, welcome. My name is Mama Vyoso Abadje. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, scores of residents of Buduburim camp mass up to resist attempt by the Gomua East District Assembly to demolish the camp in the wake of growing incidents of crimes in the area. And we will not leave. And even the break their houses will still be there. I have nowhere to go. If you see anyone parking that way, they are Ghanaians. I'm a refugee. If you are leaving your house, and your land don't want you to say go out, that we go out. More has the deadline for them to move out of the camp expires today, September 30. Also, is government broke or priorities are simply misplaced? Minority in Parliament questions as members of the judiciary express their frustration about government's handling of their allowances and other conditions of service. My problem is that we are where we are because of poor prioritization of government. In fact, I am tempted to conclude that Ghana is broke. And as we come down to the final mini clinic under the Ecobank Joy News Habitat Fair this weekend, we'll hear from organizers who are promising a bigger and better events. There's also business, sports, world news and show business all coming up. Stay with us. Let's take you live to Buduburim now because a deadline handed residents to move from the area expires today. The area previously served as a refugee camp but it has since become home to many West African nationals and Ghanaians who opted to live in Ghana after its refugee settlement status was withdrawn. The police and traditional authorities have in recent times demanded a demolition of the area saying it has become a haven for criminals. The Gomwa East District Assembly says it will demolish the place any time after today. But residents have vowed to resist any such move. If you have your house and you live in your house, they say leave the house and don't lock on how we go out. If you are living in your house and you lock door on you, say go out, how we go out. Ghana government says we go, no problem will go. But Buddha is closed, how will we go? We'll fly and go? No. We can't fly and go. Right now, your government of Ghana is saying that the chief has power by government. It's true. Because there's, this is Liberia in Ghana. It's not, government, it's not chief in Liberia. I have nowhere to go. If you see anyone uh, parking that low way, they are Ghanaians. I'm a refugee. There is three sets of refugees that are living on this camp. We have those that they gave the passport to, and they have those that they gave a letter to, and they have those to reapply uh, them. So I'm part of those who have to reapply the UN. So I'm staying here. I have nowhere to go. They said, they said we should leave. And we are not get, we're not getting anything from them yet. How can we leave today? So what they have all, they should give it out as you can go. Because if we can give it, we'll stay here in their nose and we'll not leave. And even the break their houses, we'll still be there. When we leave there, the UN will come for us and we can go. And if it's China English, I'm telling the men that we cannot leave now because we are Ghana, Ghana refugee board has something to do for us. And they can't do it, we cannot leave. And they can't even take off from here to take off another camp because they will, at the end of the day, they will come again. They said they need a lamb. And this lamb, they abort it. You abort the lamb. And now they say they're claiming a lamb. Now they say they should, when he's running a campaign, he said when he win the election, he will give the land to the, the, the chief. And now he win the election. So he said the people should come and demolish the camp. So now we are here. They don't even do our double solution yet. And they say they need the camp. So we cannot leave now until they give our double solution. Do. do you know what I'm saying? Well, what do you mean by that? Thank you. If you have your house, and you live in your house, they say leave the house. And don't lock on how we go out. If you are living in your house and you lock door on you, say go out, how we go out. So you are saying that they need to give you the opportunity before you can go? Yes. I'm saying, number one, Ghana government says we should go. No problem, we'll go. But Buddha is closed. How will we go? We'll fly and go? No. We can't fly and go. Right now, your government of Ghana is saying that the chief has power by government. It's true. Because there's, this is Liberia in Ghana. It's not, government, it's not chief in Liberia. A chief and Ghana government discussing. Liberian government out, I can say, because why? Government of Liberia are waiting in Ghana embassy to accept Liberian for December 1st, which we received last night. Last night. Ghana foreign ministry read Liberian embassy that December 1st should fight kick from the line. 
But now we are seeing part of people can't discuss it, but issue of issue, issue. We don't care. If they like today, they bring the entire Ghana to come to the camp, then we stay here. It won't for anything. We'll look at you. It won't do. But what is that? Tell your government, open border, we'll go back to our country. Is that the same for you? Yeah, it's the same for me. Because even if you break the house today, I will stay here today. Stay right here. I have nowhere to go. If you see anyone parking that low that way, they are Ghanaians. I'm a refugee. There is three sets of refugees that are living on this camp. We have those that they gave the passport to, and they have those that they gave a letter to, and they have those to reapply uh, them. So I'm part of those who have to reapply UN. So I'm staying here. I have nowhere to go. If you break the house today, I will stay here today. I will not remain even a top from the house. Go and break the house alone with the clothes. Let UN come in. And let me ask UN. Me, I have not dealing with you. I have dealing with UN. Let, let me ask UN. Why are you bring me here and you leave me outside? You brought me here to shelter me, to give me food to eat. But end of the day, you remove your back on me. He said I should go. How am I going? When well, you close your bullet. Should I walk to go? Why are you a pass? I don't have anything to do here. I don't have to work here, as you said. So which means Ghana is belongs to you. Fine, it's Red Cross and UN who brought me here. So now let Red Cross and UN find a place for me to go. That is simple. Yeah, let me just tell you a little bit of about Liberia, our history. Liberia is an ancient country, an ancient country. Ethiopia, Egypt, and Liberia, they are the first country in Africa. We are far older than Ghana. We are better than Ghana. We know plenty of things more than Ghana before. We gave Ghana independence. You see that? So our coming here, it was not, it was not by mistake. It was a written document, sound. People sound, your, your government sound. We'll return to this story after our report on the ground joins us. But away from that, is government broke? All priorities are simply misplaced. Questions begging for answers from the ranking member of the Finance Committee of Parliament, Dr. Atu uh, Forsen, following the lamentations of judges and magistrates about the handling of the allowances and other conditions of service, which they say is appalling. Speaking at the opening of the annual general meeting of the Association of Magistrates and Judges of Ghana, its president, Justice Senyo Jamafa, said it has now become an annual battle to get their allowances paid while raising concerns about their security and safety of their new residential facilities after they were relocated to pave way for the construction of the National Cathedral. Much as management has done its best in the years and the review, we still have a lot of problems as judges. One, it's always the first every year, payment of allowances. Year in, year out, we have complained about this issue of non-payment of allowances or delays in doing so. Like we said in 2019, payment of allowances has become one of the biggest issues for the association. It is sad that judges in Ghana will have to fight every year for their legitimate allowances to be paid. It is sad to say the least that the leadership of the association has to personally trek to the Ministry of Finance, Controller and Accountant General Department, Auditor General Department to fight before allowances are paid, and it's true. We have to fall on friends at the seat of government to push for such allowances to be paid. As of September 2021, that is this month, we still have not received any foil allowance for the year. Mr. Chairman, it is so frustrating to say the least. Mr. Chairman, without mincing words, we are so frustrated. We feel disrespected about the way our allowances are paid, as if it's a favor being done us. For so many years now, we have never been paid in quotes any foil allowance. It has always been a refund. As usual, we use our own money from our taxed salaries to purchase foil. This is later refunded after so many months and then taxed as if it was paid upfront. In effect, we pay double taxes for foil, tax salaries and ex-pump taxes. The courts insist very much on timelines in litigation since they are creatures of statute. Yet, same is overlooked when it comes to payment of allowances to us. Book and robing allowances. 
I said in 2019 that the service to government has long forgotten about these allowances. The last book allowance was paid in 2019. Robing allowance for this year is still not paid. Robing is five years, so people qualify every year, but this year it's not paid. While the finance ministry is not readily available to provide answers on the delays, but ranking member of the Finance Committee of Parliament and former Deputy Finance Minister Dr. Kessel at a force and expressed surprise about the development and cautioned government about the larger impact on justice delivery in the country. He spoke on news desk. Honestly, it is not before the committee officially, but I've read about it and, and let me say that I'm disturbed. I'm disturbed for a simple reason that uh, we all know the important role the ju judiciary in particular plays in every organization. If we talk about compensation of employees, it's made up of salaries and allowances. So if government of the day decide to pay one leg of somebody's entitlement and fails to pay the other, it doesn't really sound good. But you see, the difficulty that we have here is that because the judiciary oftentimes find it difficult to speak for themselves, and oftentimes it's parliament that speaks for them, they find it difficult to espouse this. My problem is that we are where we are because of poor prioritization of government. In fact, I am tempted to conclude that Ghana is broke. Well, Chairman of the Constitutional and Legal Affairs Committee of Parliament, Kwame Anyimedwenchi, assured the judiciary that the legislative arm of government will deal decisively with their concerns. Uh, and I think I will work with my colleagues uh, when we resume, even we'll start working towards this and finding out where uh, something has gone wrong. And uh, we all put our minds together and efforts together to make sure that this situation is rectified and rectified for good. Not only the judges and magistrates, but all other institutions that will be receiving allowances from government. And maybe we would have to uh, actually look at it, if it is possible, to actually consolidate those allowances in a part of their salary. Then we would not, these problems would not reoccur. Meanwhile, Chief Justice Kwesi Anini Yabua has acknowledged the constraints faced by judges, but has asked them to do their best to win the trust of the public. We have serious constraints as an institution. In a population of over 30 million, we have less than 404 judges and magistrates administering justice in a litigious society like Ghana. The cause of justice may not easily be accessible to the poor or the legally aided litigant who may equally not qualify for legal aid. However, we have to do our best within the limited logistic constraints to serve the justice needs of our compatriots. For example, from Central Accra, that is a Jabin, to Nsawem, there is not a single court on that stretch until Amazamai. And this should not happen in any civilized country. The same situation is true for Kumasi. From Kumasi Central to Obuasi, there is no court on the way, and that is a distance of about 36 miles. Nevertheless, we still have to adjust to these constraints and hope that the state will apply a bit more resources to provide court infrastructure to support, so, sorry, to support justice delivery in Ghana. Permit me to applaud government and members of parliament at this juncture for the construction of some new courts under the Disassembly Common Fund project. The judiciary is now to receive over 100 courts throughout the country within the next three years. The judiciary is also grateful to the administrator of the Disassembly Common Fund in this regard. I wish to urge you as part of measures to improve upon our justice delivery to advise litigants in appropriate cases to resort to ADR in cases which ADR is appropriate to lessen the burden which is imposed on us. We have to also avoid unnecessary adjournments that are not sought on legitimate grounds. 
You should avoid adjourning rulings and judgments as these cause delays in bringing finality to cases when very short adjournments, adjournments could dispose of the matter. It is illegal for commercial drivers to pick up passengers along the motorway, but that has not stopped trot trot drivers from turning the Manet Junction stretch of the motorway into an illegal station. Kwejo is one of these such drivers. He knows he's breaking the law, but as he explains to my colleague Kwejo Yang Singh, he takes the risk just to make a living. The motorway is a very fast route. Many of the passengers now move from Springter, Streblau and Madina to this point because they know we are all here. And now there are many homes along this stretch, so definitely you'd have someone stop by. The police do arrest us. Some will also take something and let us go. So, with vehicles rocketing to and from Tema at about 100 kilometers per hour, the motorway is an extremely dangerous road to cross. But the new settlement springing up on the either side of the concrete highway mean uh, there's no shortage of pedestrians attempting to zigzag their way through speeding traffic to board the illegally parked trotros operated by Kojo and his colleagues. He admits a number of these pedestrians have been knocked over right before his very eyes. How does he and his colleagues react whenever this happens? They abandon the victims and drive off. Uh, Many pedestrians are knocked down, that is true. And once there's an accident, we flee. Otherwise, you'd be in trouble when the police arrives. We return to our earlier story on Budumburim and the camp that's expected to be demolished with a deadline ending or expiring today. My colleague Joseph Akabli is in the office of the MCE. Uh, Joseph joins us live with more. Joseph. Hello, Joseph, if you can hear me, what can you report? Unfortunately, we lost Joseph Akable on the line. We're going to raise him back uh, to continue this conversation of a deadline uh, for persons who live in the Bujumburim camp uh, to vacate close of day today. Today's the final day, and we're told by authorities uh, that that area is going to be demolished entirely. We'll return to that story when we have Joseph Akable joining us on the line. In the meantime, a dark, stuffy and tiny room with no ventilation. That's the condition of the only male at the June 4 yard at the Agbubulushi market where scores of food hawkers cook. The two square meter room does not only receive raw vegetables and other grains for melon, but also has droppings of two uh, pigeons kept in a rusted cage, falling off sometimes into the milled dough. On this edition of Joy Clean Ghana Campaign, AMA officials shut down the mill, which is sited in the middle of the yard where most foods meant to be sold in the central business district are cooked. Manuel Cranting has the rest of the story. Today on this episode of Joy Clean Ghana Campaign, we're back at the Agbubulushi market. Now, have you wondered if you bought wachi on the road, if you bought rice on the road, if you bought... I mean, any meal that you might have bought from a vendor who was hawking, most likely would have come from this place. And so we're here this uh, morning to try and assess the conditions under which they cook this food uh, for public consumption. 
because what there are hundreds if not thousands of people whose daily meal are cooked from here so, so where are you beginning from okay we're beginning from here Start from this woman okay good morning madam good morning how are you uh, you might want to know why. Mr. Akuya is just summoning the uh, the owner of this particular spot. Oh, your friend was saying. Your friend was saying. Zainab. Zainab. Oh, oh, nipa hina odi ya juma wa. Oni nipa hina ya juma wa. Two. Good. Oni yena oh e me karata no. I'm out to me say, to told you any money, but who will be? One casa will be. I 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 will that's Uko Hospital as I are a new door so any sickness when you are doing it, you have to prepare to do it. Oh, when you are fine, now you see sick, you have to do it. I have to do it. What you say? Say, baby, you have to do it. I have to do it. You have to do it. Baby, you have to do it. That's it. And you answer. Even in the first place, who need to me, sir, over here do you need that AMA character? Who need be? Uh, they say driving license. Who uh, could a car? Now who need driving license? Uh, police uh, stop who say uh, driving license over here. Over here. How much? So, in the first place, I'm going to say that. We cross over now live to join Joseph Akable, who is having a conversation with the Gomua East DCE. From the presidency. Is it? And so DICEC met and uh, agreed on a two month um, uh, ultimatum, or if you like, moratorium for residents to leave the place. And that, that two months ends today, being uh, 30th of September. Um, after that, um, the rest of the matter is a national security uh, issue. So the demolition, the actual demolition, may commence any time after today. So that is what is going on. And uh, uh, we decided to put out uh, the, that, that final reminder to residents that the, the, the day, the, the last day is here. So basically, that, that, that is it. And, and what is the specific reason for the demolition? Is it the case that, I mean, because we've heard it being put out there that the area has become a crime, crime haven of sorts. I mean, what specifically is the reason? Uh, it's a myriad of, of factors. Um, the first is that, is what you have just mentioned. You know, um, Budubrem has become so notoriously <laughs> popular for, for criminal activities. A uh, number of uh, uh, robbers uh, are often chased to that place uh, for arrests and those things. Uh, I hope you have not also lost sight of the fact that it was just Budumbrim, the same Budumbrim that two able-bodied policemen were gunned down uh, one hot afternoon, um, and uh, several of them. So the security matter uh, challenge is one. But that aside, the place itself has outlived its usefulness. By that I mean it has ceased to be a camp since 2010. Because 1919 when the place became, was used, was acquired, uh, if you like, uh, to be used as a camp for the refugees from Sierra Leone, Liberia and co. Um, that has ceased since 2010. Because when Liberia became stable, Sierra Leone and those things, the United Nations High Commission on Refugees and the Ghana Refugee Board both undertook uh, repatriation and sent the people there, those who wanted to. And those who wanted to integrate into Ghana, i.e. accept that, oh, they want to be Ghanaians forever, were also given the option. And by, from my information, 
they were also given monies to to be able to leave the camp and settle anywhere they wanted in Ghana. Uh, that is what some have failed to do and have remained there and have become a conduit for other, uh, if you like, non-refugees to also infiltrate into the camp and perpetrate uh, all the ma all manner of crime that you and I know. So aside the crime aspect, the camp itself is no more a camp. And indeed, the chiefs who offered the place to government for use as a camp are also de demanding their land back for, for use for other purposes. Just this morning, I, I met a, a, a team. They came. Um, we have met, I think, about five teams who all have interest. We are talking of 141 acre land. Um, so uh, it's not unusual to have more than one owner. They have all come, and uh, interestingly, they are all behind the support, the demolition for the place to be used for some other uses. What is uh, left is uh, maybe the dividends that will go to each of those uh, uh, landowners and those things when the place is eventually used for the other purposes we are we are we have contem we are contemplating. So so uh, as for the reasons behind, they are they are uh, like I said. Is a is a myriad of them. Uh, so, so far, so in terms of one inhabitants, let me ask a question. One, one so, set time. So, on the, on, on the point of decommissioning in 2010, some say that they are still refugees, and also in terms of the uh, integration into the Malian society, they have not been given the package they were promised, and are asking for more time, and also uh, for what they were promised to be given to them: housing, education, and the likes. They say they will be what do you want to say to that? And also, which specific if, 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 if you, could, you could let me react to yes. those ones, because if you string them, uh, I may skip some. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, the, the issue of uh, uh, compensation or uh, package, uh, I'm sure those here are a responsibility of the United Nations. That's how come they are under the UNHCR. So whatever is due them, I'm sure is being looked at over there. Um, I, my duty for now does not include considering uh, res uh, set resettlement package and whatever. I, I am tasked to bring it to their attention, being the DC in the area, that the, the place will be demolished. Whatever is, is, is due them by way of resettlement, reintegration, those things, I'm sure they know the appropriate uh, quarters that handle those things. But uh, let me add that just yesterday, the, you know, uh, the, the, the refugee board were here, and they actually promised that, yes, they are bringing buses to pick their, their few people of concern. That is the description they give. People of concern who are still at that place, they are picking them to a place somewhere in the uh, western region. They say they still have a, a refugee camp there. So I think that, that is sorted out. I'm sure while they are there, they can continue to engage uh, the appropriate authorities regarding whatever package is due them. And that's the Gomoa East uh, District's chief executive explaining that there has not been any extension uh, to that notice given persons who live in Budumburim, as you know. Uh, today is the last day for them to evacuate. Uh, the place has been earmarked for demolition. But he also talks about the fact that the dates for the exact demolition has not been given, except that persons living there will have to evacuate close of day today. There hasn't been any extension in the time that's been given. Now, if you live in Accra, this is for you. Wherever you want to rent or build, a simple mobile app can tell you the risk of flooding in the area. It's an app built by the Ghana Meteorological Agency to help people in the capital to stay safe whenever it rains. To help us know or uh, prepare ourselves in terms of any flood event within our community. And it also gives you um, weather forecast on estimated rainfall that has the potential of causing this flood or hazard within your community. And the name of the app is My Flood Risk Accra App. 
and this can easily be downloaded for Android or on an Apple phone. You can easily do that from a Play Store. So in this app, we have two sessions basically, which tells you about the uh, water level within your community, whether you are at a high risk, low risk, or, uh, or moderate risk, depending on the impact and then your community, the community especially, whether you are a flood prone a, uh, zone, you can be able to determine this water level there. And this water level is informed by the weather forecast that is issued be, be, uh, based on the estimated what um, amount of rainfall expected over your community. So this forecast is issued three times um, daily from 6 a.m. in the morning, then we update in the afternoon and also for the evening. Um, if we expect any higher as, um, rainfall that could cause flood more than expected, um, we could also update that at any time that the weather is expected to, to cause that event. For the start, it just covers three parts within the greater Accra um, area, which is Gan East, Gan West, and AMA. So these are the areas that this app covers for, for now. So anybody traveling to the city, especially to these communities, can access this information. Uh, aside getting the water level information for potential flood, as well as the estimated weather forecast, it can also help you to have preventive measures or tips on flood in general. So we, you cannot only just use it for that, um, just assessing water level and flood or, or rainfall forecast, but you can also use it to learn more about flood information in general. So teachers can also use this app to teach their students. There are graphic information, uh, infographic information in there that makes learning easier. Now the third mini clinic of the Ecobank Joy News Habit Affair comes off this weekend at the Junction Mall. Organizers are promising something bigger and better. In case you're still wondering what to expect, here is an excerpt from the last mini clinic held at the West Hills Mall. The two-day mini clinic, which is the second in a series of three, ahead of the main Joy News Ecobank Habitat Fair in October, attracted scores of patrons who were in search of answers to the question of whether to buy or to build that dream home. Various exhibitors pitched camp at the West Hills Mall with varied options on display. Aside that, we have three and four bedroom houses that we are selling within our gated estate located at Katamanso of the Adenta Dodowa Road. We also have UPVC windows, doors and accessories here. Um, Fairnet has been in existence since 1974, which is about 47 years old and the only wood manufacturing company in Ghana as of now. Uh, we can boast of quality doors, woods, woods that are properly dried to the lowest temperature, uh, temp moisture content. Our doors are made of galvanized steel, okay. solid galvanized steel doors, yeah. What we call glazing. We have value streets, we've introduced gates as part of um, our lines, and most recently, our pergola and then very wonderful kitchens. It comprises of co four components. You have the aluminum, the zinc, the magnesium, and the silicon. All these components come together to aid the product to perform better. For private individuals who wanted their own homes, this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I have seen these people bumping smart home, and their things are quality. I have their lights. When you put it on your phone, you can switch your light on phone and put it off on your phone. And even you can talk, and the light will go off or come on. And you can talk, the blender will start working or go off. So you are buying? Yes, I'm buying. I'm, I'm about to pay it before you call. Make the first step. Put the first step and make the first step and do the analysis for themselves and see how, whether it's good for them to build based on your income, whether it's to build or to buy. But they were not alone. There were other building consultants and architects who were taking time off their busy schedules to hunt for new housing products and services at the clinic. It's, I'm an architect. Um, some of these exposures are very good. You come around and you see different um, and the variety of um, things, products that we have in stock. Um, and then that better also informs you as to whatever recommendations you can also make to clients when, when they, they, they come to you. Yes. Uh, I'm an engineer myself, so I decided to pass by to see what is being offered, especially in the area of lands and, and other accessories relating to the industry, the building industry. 
That's why I'm here, and I've been impressed. But uh, I recommend that if you are planning, or if you even intend to do, just pass by. There are offers that might meet your need. For many of the exhibitors who set up at the clinic, it had been a good time to make great sales. All of yes, these money. It's, it's a good opportunity for okay. Joy News, and I think it's it's it, this opportunity. We, we are just making good advantage. We are taking good advantage of it. Yes, so we are making some sales. Yes, thanks. And the last mini clinic van will make a stop at the Jiangshan Mall, 2nd and 3rd of October, just this weekend. Do make a date. On that note, we'll take a breather. We will be back with business. Hello and welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. The Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Uzi Fiyakutu, has revealed that about 1 billion CDs was spent on subsidizing seeds under the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative in 2020. According to him, the well-being of farmers is a priority to government despite the financial challenges. He shamed those he calls naysayers and assured of abundance of food. In the coming year, he was speaking at the launch of the 37th edition of the National Farmers Day. Barely two months after the implementation of the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative, there was shortage of seedlings. Government had to turn to Burkina Faso for help at the time. At the launch of the 37th edition of National Farmers Day, the Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Usufia Koto, disclosed that about 1 billion cities were spent on subsidizing seeds under the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative last year. As we think through how to increase support to farmers, the National Farmers Day celebration should give some assurance to farmers that they will remain a priority in our quest to catalyze the modernization of agriculture to boost Ghana's economic and social development. And as evidence of the government's commitment to support farmers, in particular smallholding farmers, in 2020, this government of Akufuado spend nearly a billion Ghana cities subsidizing seed and fertilizer alone. Deputy Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Moses Enim, retreated his outfit's commitment to sanitize the fisheries sector. According to him, the pandemic necessitated deliberation, which led to the formation of some policies to improve the sector. He is poised to sanitize the fisheries sector and ensure that the enormous potential, especially in agriculture, are fully exploited in collaboration with relevant stakeholders. We can all attest to the fact that the COVID-19 post era has enabled discussions and learning among stakeholders from the crisis to improve the sustainability and resilience of, fishes, of fisheries and aquaculture in food systems. The outcomes of this key engagement must be put to action through policy formulation and implementation with full commitment by government. This year's National Farmers' Day celebrations will be held in the central region. According to the regional minister, Justina Hassan, hosting the celebration this year was the appropriate time as the central region recently got a grip of the Planting for Food and Jobs program. This year's celebration in the region has come at a time where the region is actively participating in the Planting for Food and Jobs program, which has benefited thousands of people in the region. The 31st Farmers' Day celebration, which will be held in the central region, has the ability to harness the numerous economic potentials by boosting the local economy, as people will be hosted in our hotels, people will also be doing business with us, Side city scene will be there because we are the hub of tourism in the region and employment will be created for food vendors to also get enough money. In our venues, congestion at the Dr. Mensa station in Kumase is leading to an increasing speed of accidents, walking on pavements and parts of the streets in the area obstruct vehicular and pedestrian movement. The obstruction uh, to vehicular movement is a major challenge to motorists as the traders consistently defy orders to leave the unauthorized trading places. There's more in this report. I am here at the central business district 
precisely Dr. Mensa, and this place is very congested. There's no leeway for passerby or pedestrians to even walk as traders have occupied the walkways up to even the street itself, causing traffic. And the stench here is just unbearable. <laughs> The Dr. Mensa station was originally designed as a lorry terminal. Over the years, hawkers and traders have turned the area into a market. Traders relocated from the Kumasi Central Market to pave way for the market reconstruction project have refused to move to their new designated markets. A number of them are occupying pavements and streets. Samuel Opoku, a station master, bemoans the discomfort for drivers. The market women have blocked the roads. Our cars are unable to move. Some say they pay taxes to authorities, hence their unwillingness to relocate. The traders claim the market reconstruction has left them stranded despite space designated for them at the race course market. This place is not comfortable nor safe for us. Vehicles knock us down. But what can we do? We have no place to stay. The race course market is not the best place for us. The authorities can allot a land to several traders. Checks indicate the Dr. Mensa station is recording incidents of accidents due to the congestion. Currently, there is little space for vehicles and pedestrians to commute. A car ran over someone's foot a few minutes ago. The case is at the police station. If you are not always alert when walking, a car may knock you down. Honestly, we know we are not supposed to sell here, but there is nowhere to go. The situation has affected the sales of traders. Since morning, I have not made any sales. Is that my business? I have. Sometimes I live here with no sales for the day. Mona Lisa Frempon reporting. More business news coming up at the top of the hour on the marketplace up next sports. Thanks for staying with us here on the Joy News channel. And in our first sporting story, Azaka's ladies have been drawn in Group A of the Cup Women's Champions League. And we have a reaction. They were drawn alongside the hosts, uh, Wadi Degla of Egypt, the Ghana Premier League champions, qualify for the competition as winners of Wafu Zombi by beating Nigerian side Rivers Angels in the final. At the draw held at CAF's headquarters yesterday, Azaka's ladies were also pit against Malian champions AS Mande. That this is what the coach of Azaka's ladies, Yusuf Basige, had to say. The draw, I wouldn't say it's okay because there is no main club that is playing for the competition. Okay. These are all champions <laughs> that are going to meet. Okay. So for me, I would term it as a, a top group because I need to respect um, my opponent as well. So I, I, um, I regard all of them as a very good side. So it's a top group. Well, for now, I don't know any of them. Okay. I'm here to know them okay. because uh, now that the, the draw has come, because I couldn't have uh, uh, gone through to search for any of them until this draw. Okay. Uh, so now that the draw is out, now I have to know who are my opponents and how do they play. Okay, sure. We are going to invent our means to live up to expectation. And for that matter, you know, all of us are going with one mode. All the eight class are meeting there with one mode. The ultimate. Yeah. yeah. So we are all going with the ultimate, but um, it's too early for one to say that we are going to win the trophy because we have not even been in the competition yet. Okay. But to impress means that we are going to make an impact. Yeah. 
The other team in the group are Malabo Kings. Yes, Malabo Kings, even though they are a women's team, they are from Equatorial Guinea. In boxing, the football, the boxing governing body in the country, the GBA, has lifted a two-year ban it, it imposed on former IBF lightweight champion Richard Comey. That was two days ago. Now, the sanction, you might recall, was handed Comey in April this year after he made false allegations and disparaging remarks about the GBA executive in a television interview. But the newly constituted GBA executive board took a decision to pardon the boxer following weeks of meetings to review the suspension handed Comey six months ago. And in reaction, um, Joy Sports' Nathaniel Atto has, however, charged the GBA to crack the whip when boxers go astray. I do expect the GBA to be striking that disciplinary rod because, I mean, whether or not it affects the boxer, it sends a certain clear message to all licensees of the Ghana Boxing Authority that we are within a body that operates with rules and regulations and operates under a certain framework. And therefore, if any boxer falls foul of these rules and regulations, they are surely going to face uh, sanctions. And so for me, it is important that when boxers go wrong, the sanctions are applied. You realize that in this case, um, the, the, the wise counsel or the intervention of the government chair, Ni uh, Takiteko Chu, the second, was, was sought. And because of that, it was expected that the GBA would back down. But of course, the GBA also bases this argument on the fact that when uh, Kome issued that apology, it did not sound uh, remorseful enough because it still had some innuendos in there. It still had some sarcasm in there. And you could not exactly feel that sense of, uh, of, of regret in his voice and in his tone. And because of that, decided to go ahead with the, um, with the ban. Look, uh, Gary, you and I are Ghans. We come from the southern part of Ghana. And we give a lot of reverence to our traditional rulers. And therefore, if there's a, there's a sanctioning body that is operating within this area where the overlord says, my sons, you let it go, we have to let it go. But you have to realize that once the GBA doesn't let, let it go, then there is a problem. And so... For me, it is important that that message is sent out there, not only to boxers, but to other licensees under the Ghana Boxing Authority that we operate under rules and regulations. And if we want to see our boxing get back up there, like it was in the days when we had uh, DK Poison, in the days when we had I Korte, um, Azuma Nelson and the like, then we need to be disciplined as a body. And it applies to everybody else, irrespective of what your credentials are. Nathaniel Lato and then the sport here. I'm Gary Al Smith. Thank you for your time. And we have more sports on myjoyonline.com plus at 2 p.m. Sports Today will be featuring an exclusive interview with the agent of Heart of Folks, Afutu um, Kote, who, as you know, has had contractual issues with the club. What was the main story? George Adu Jr. brings us that interview at 2 p.m. In showbiz, a few weeks ago, Nollywood actor Jamaik was involved in a nasty fight with fellow actor uh, Uchi Maduogu. Jamaik assaulted him for insulting him in a viral video. He had alleged that Jim is a fraudster and a ritualist. While well, Jamaik was in the Joy Studios with Enimua Ado and Andy Dossi and has been clearing the air. The truth is I that don't. we're all humans. Not my finest hour, I dare say, but uh, you know, emotions run high. Why does it have to be the public figure that is held at accountable all the time, that is held at the higher standards of moral ethics all the time? We all get into arguments, don't we? We're all humans. We all go to have a conversation. I didn't wake up in the morning and I walk into this gentleman's um, um, studio and decided to have an altercation with him. Mm. Don't forget, something provoked that incident already. This is a man that called into question the, my integrity in the first place. That said I'm a ritualist, that that's how I live the life I live, the quality of life I live. I'm a really? man that, this man said that every, they should check the means of my wealth. That the quality of life and the things that I own obviously has to have nefarious backgrounds, mm. questionable backgrounds, that I'm a ritualist, okay? This is someone that lives in a country where we have the most corrupt leaders of all times. Of, and that's in the history of corrupt leaders, Nigerians take the mantle. We decide what corrupt leaders should look like. Where they, where, <laughs> you understand? Seriously, where, where, they, where, where they post a child for corrupt leaders. You know? yeah. And then yeah. you pick a man that since his 20s has walked till his early 40s to say you question the quality of life he lives. 
I went there to have a conversation because I'm a student of history. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a humanist. I want to understand the reason behind the reason. Why would you wake up in the morning and the first order of business for you is how to pull another person down? I wasn't the only one that was called into this picture. I did say it called three or four other people. So I wanted to also prove a point that you can't stay behind the curtains and do these things and, and think nobody will find you. My point was to tell them I can find anybody I want anytime. And you can confront them. I have will. I have resources. Did you get the answers that you wanted? Absolutely. I okay. went in there. We had a conversation. Things, of course, took a turn for the, for the worse. And yeah, yeah, I mean, went south a little bit. That was the picture the press needed to sensationalize it. They didn't catch well. We sat down. We had a conversation like men, popped a bottle of wine, drank to our health, and got it over with. The generation I come from, my dear, we don't do the, the, the social media exchanges and pull-ups. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Mm. I'm a man. I don't know about this peace, you know, for lack of a better term. Okay. I walk. And that's your show business. Indeed, that's it for Joy News today. Log on to myjoyonline.com for more news. My name is Mama Vyoswa Thanks for your company. Enjoy the afternoon.